Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me on another episode of Inspiring Penny. Today I'm at the Southeast Regional Library in Kipling. We have an amazing library here. I'm actually on the board now um, and we do programming and tonight we are having Dwayne Light come in with the chain mail. So I'm excited to uh, sit down and have an interview with him and show you how amazing his talent is for making chain mail. So come along with me. Hey everyone, I am now with the man, the myth, the legend, Dwayne Light. So Dwayne um, was a past mayor of Kipling. He is an actor. He, you've acted, acted. in a few shows. Acted. Act, you act every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of a home chef. Yeah, I like the Food Network. I get my influence from that. Yeah, and you are a husband, father, grandfather. Yes. And a torment in Kipling. Yes. Yes. So, and you also work for Sus Power. Yes. Yes. So, why don't you tell us a little about a little bit about yourself? And um, as you mentioned, uh, uh, married thirty four years just just a few weeks ago. Um, three children. One is married, two grandchildren, which is the best job in the world. Wind them up, fill them full of chocolate, and send them home. I highly recommend it. If possible, start with grandchildren first. Yeah. Because children are a pain. Fair enough. I work for SAS Power. I've been with the company for, I'm in my 29th year. I've been in Kipling since 2001, and it was actually SAS Power that brought me to Kipling. Okay. I transferred in to work in the high voltage switching stations. Okay. So I get to play with really, really, really big electricity every day. So that might explain you in a sense. In a sense, yes, because yeah. it's it, it has it has its detrimental effects. Yeah, oh, yeah. sorry. So why Kipling? Like, why do you stay in Kipling? Is it just because of your job? Or? Um, yes, initially it was just because of my job. I wasn't sure how long I'd be here. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up on a farm near a small town. My wife grew up on a farm near a small town. So we were we came from Swift Current to Kipling. So we oh. we came from. 7-Elevens and Safeway on Sunday and 24-7 everything until Kipling and our first long weekend in town we're going where we buy milk. Right because then the stores weren't open at that so, time on yeah, Sundays. Exactly so but we've adjusted it and we actually have grown to love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you eventually became the mayor of Kipling? Yes. I didn't actually research what year that was and how long. Uh, it was a four-year term, and it would have been, oh crap, I got to do math now, 2012, 2016. Yeah. yeah. I had served several terms on council prior to that. Right. I was actually originally elected to town council in a by-election seven months after I moved to Kipling. Okay. So you were also around then when Kipling did the giant red paper? Yes, I was on council for that, yeah. that uh, fun-filled weekend. Yeah. So then that ties in... A little bit to your acting career. Yeah, yeah, it does actually, because I participated in the audition process that Corbin held for the winner of the movie role. And that movie was Rust. Um, I'll just do a little bio about it. Um, it's about a former pastor who walked away from his calling, returns to his small hometown to discover that a mysterious fire tragically struck a local family. When he learns that his childhood friend is implicated in starting the fire, he sets out on a mission to find the truth and in the process rediscovers his faith. And I discovered your character was named Larry. Yes. And what exactly was your character? Uh, my character was an NHL scout. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a, the character in the movie played by Ron Cardinal, it was, his, it was written that his son was an NHL prospect. So my character was the uh, scout for an NHL team, you know, checking him out. Mm -hmm. And the interesting about Rust, um, the characters in Rust, a, lot, a large part of them are named after people that Corbin met. Oh, I didn't know that. Kipley, yeah, so Larry is Larry Jackson. Oh. Lauren Cardinal's name is Dwayne, named after me. Oh, okay. I will put a shot of that um, uh, DVD in the comments. Um, so that if you guys haven't watched it, it's been a long time since I've watched it, but it is in my collection at home. It's actually in, it is a really good movie. Like you, it is. There was two professional actors in the entire movie for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the local people did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. 
No, and it, normal job. it's really good for Kipling. And I, I wish that, you know, Saskatchewan had more uh, television done. That hopefully is coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the government made a decision several years ago to cut the funding. Mm -hmm. um, the funding basically worked that if it was Saskatchewan hired talent or Saskatchewan talent living in Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. they, the government would refund part of their wages. And um, the decision was made several years ago to remove that funding. And the Saskatchewan Chamber of Commerce estimated that the filming done in Saskatchewan brought approximately $7 million a year into the economy. It cost the government a little bit over $2 million. Wow. They are bringing it back, I don't know to what degree, mm -hmm. but there has been stories of a television series being filmed in Regina starting up maybe this fall or next oh, year. And what's that about? Um, it's called King of Killers. It's oh. involving um, an assassin. Oh, okay. And um, a clan of assassins. There's actually a movie I don't know if it's coming out soon or what stage it's in, but it's the television series is based on the movie. Oh, okay. You also had a couple other uh, parts in Insecurity. Yes. And Mercy. Yes. Um, in Insecurity, you were actually all I could find was the kissing the guy. The kissing guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So awkward. How, was that like a that was a series? Insecurity was a series on CBC several years ago, and I I kind of describe it as, we'll say it's a Canadian version of Get Smart. Mm -hmm. um, insecurity was the Canadian spy agency, oh, okay. uh, or, or anti-spy agency, or whatever you want to call it, maybe the CIA or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. but it was more, it was a pure comedy. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was just these people having mishaps while they're trying to la, la, track down government agents. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My part in that show was, um, my, ca my character description, I was a physicist, and I was being enticed by a foreign agent to reveal all my secrets. Wow. And that so, scientist. Exactly. This, it was, to say the least, awkward um, doing this because it was like you, you show up, you're told to show up at a specific time, you're told all this, so you show up and it's like, and this is so-and-so, I don't remember the young lady's name, and she's going to be the one you'll be kissing in five minutes. Oh my God. <laughs> um, the awkward part of it was she's, I would estimate, about the same age as my oldest daughter. So there was that whole, like it was supposed to be the beautiful young woman and the old scientist, that, that whole dynamic. Yeah. But it was like, uh, all I could think of is this, you're, you're the same age as my daughter. Oh, so hence the kissing guy. And yeah. then Mercy, you were the warden. Yes. Um, See, when I read that, I'm like, I could, I could totally picture you being a warden. Warden Ginobili. Uh, Mercy is based on somebody who had some issues with the law in the past. He hit a deer, um, had a gun in the back of his truck, put the deer out of its provide mercy. Yeah. But he was, but he wasn't supposed to have him in possession of firearms. Oh. So he ended up in jail, and it says about his experience in jail. Yeah, that it. Yeah, I didn't get that from the bio. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mercy was rather interesting, um, especially in the audition process, because um, you, you're you're given a script, you're given two minutes of lines. Um, you said you show up at a specific time to perform this, and most of the time it's like somebody like yourself. You're sitting there responding to my lines and providing me, so I actually have a, somebody to have a conversation. With. Yeah. So I went through the first one, and in my mind, I blew it. Oh really? I just I I skipped a line. I froze up partway through it, and I kind of walked out and it was like the proverbial banging your head against the wall. It's like what? Well, that's done. A few days later, I got a phone call saying, "Can you come back and do it? Do a second round?" I was like, "Don't know why, but sure." Mm -hmm. And weirdly enough, in the meantime, I suffered from a severe nosebleed. It was that very, very dry, cold, cold, cold February. And my nose just out of nowhere started pouring blood. I was in Regina at the time, so we went to the hospital and not knowing for sure, but I estimate I must have lost close to two pints of blood. Oh, so that's totally gonna affect the way that you feel, the way oh, you feel yeah, everything. I, I donate blood on a regular basis and I've never been dizzy donating blood, ever. This, I was having trouble walking. Wow. 
Um, so they actually said like the doctor examined and it wasn't, you know, the typical first aid stuff, you pinch your nose or whatever. It was actually up inside my sinus cavity that was so dry and so cracked that that's where the, the bleed was coming from. But to make a long story longer, what they did essentially is shove a tiny balloon up my nose. And just to, to and you fill it, uh, in. fill it in and kind of like um, pressure, uh, fill in the space to, to provide a clotting point. That was ran to a little air pump that was taped to my cheek. That you had to pump up? Pump up every now and so like a Nike shoe. Oh my God. And, I had and you to, had to go to an inter- I went to an audition with that on with my this, fi- with this thing on my face. Hang on, let me pump up. <laughs> I, did warn them, I did warn them ahead of time, this is the situation, so when I walk in, don't freak. But maybe it was that thing up my nose. Oh. I aced it, got the part, it was great. So how long did were you on that shoot? Uh, it would have been two days okay. in total, yeah. And am I correct that you did corner gas? Yes, did. I did background of corner gas somewhere between 25 and 30 episodes. Yes. So, you know, you look in the background of the coffee shop or walking down the street or or anything like that. So which was your favorite? What was your favorite thing to do? Um, in regards to corner gas or... Or in your whole career as an actor. Probably Mercy. Yeah. Yeah. And what's because you were an actor. Oh, okay. Yeah. And would you do it again? In a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. And so, do you often go and look for auditions? Um, sounds kind of pompous, but I have an agent. Well, actually, I did when I googled. I did see <laughs> that you had an agent. I'm like, oh, la la, I'm really so, going to interview somebody. So this, this, the agent, um, they would get a prospectus from, say, a casting director. Yeah. You know, in the case of, of an acting role, you they would say we're looking for somebody on you know specific physical description or whatever it might okay. be, male, female, young, old, whatever, and then she would go f- through her portfolio and and then, and then notify then. all those people that meet that meet that cri- uh, criteria. And then you can go in for an audition. And you go for an audition now. Hmm. Probably the bad thing about auditions is you don't know how you've done. Oh. You don't get feedback. Oh, you just sit down do it and then and and they you you go through your spiel whatever it might be and they say okay we'll try it happy or try it like you're angry or, or they may give you a little bit of direction and it's like thanks for coming out next oh. in background you're essentially furniture with legs mm-hmm. you know you sit there and like if you're in the case of corner gas if you're in the ruby you're supposed to mind that you're having coffee or having food or, or whatever it might be and there is no coffee in your cup, is there? No. No. <laughs> no, there isn't. Um, there's, there could be food on your plate, mm-hmm. so there could be like fries or, or a sandwich or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. But, and you don't speak. Oh, so you just move your lips? You, you move your lips, and quite often, the, quite often, actually, you, you don't just move your lips, you try and mouth words, and the most common one is raspberry. Raspberry? Really? Yeah. <laughs> I- that's what they that's what they tell you to do yeah. oh. and you don't speak to the actors oh it's a no-no really because yeah. they're just in the case of corner gas a lot of those guys are really good about it but there's some of them like some of the other movies i've been on it's like they're they're in the zone there oh i suppose yeah and the director doesn't direct you the director has one of his assistants because there's a whole hierarchy, yeah. So if you get directed by the director, it bumps your pay scale. Interesting. So the director would say, go move him one seat yeah. down or whatever. So were you always into drama as a as Um, A little kid? bit, yeah. Because yeah. I know you did the Kipling. The dinner theater. The yeah. dinner theater. But as growing up in high school, high school it wasn't... Because um, I, I lived 30 miles away from my high school, oh. it was difficult to be involved in any, anything like that. Mm-hmm. But like say grade school, you know, your your typical Christmas parties or whatever. Yeah, you'd be the kid that stands out. And... Well, I usually got the biggest part because I was able to memorize things better than my classmates. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I know you and I both love Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Yes. And what is it about Comic Con that you love? I'm a nerd. Yeah. I get to go hang out with my fellow nerds. Yeah. 
And it is actually kind of neat to rub elbows with famous people. Mm -hmm. So who's the most famous person you've ever met? Uh, the voice of Darth Vader. Are you? David Prowse. Really? Yeah. Where yeah, did I you see him, him in Winnipeg? Oh. Yeah. Um, seen Jordi the the actor who played Jordi the Forge with R. Burton. Mm -hmm. um, Reading Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. Mm -hmm. uh, the actor who played Q on Star Trek, John DeLance. Um, Marina Sirtis, Gates McFadden, obviously I gravitate towards Star Trek. Yeah. Carrie Fisher. I got to meet Carrie Fisher about three months before she passed away. Really? Yeah. Was that in Winnipeg as well? Or no, that was in Saskatoon actually. Oh, okay. It, that was weird. Huh? She's quirky to begin with. Yeah. Her personnel was, was very quirky. So you're in a long lineup and obviously for someone as famous as Carrie, the lineup is long. I work my way through the lineup. Um, the way it usually works in these autograph sessions is, um, for example, you're the famous person. I'd be sitting here ahead of you and the patron would come up and say, okay, I want that picture autographed. And you pay your money and then I would take your name down and I would write it out how it's spelled. So when it's handed to you as the famous person, you know, you know the exact spelling. Yeah. So that went fine. and. She signs my picture and she looks up at me and she goes, lean forward. Okay. So I kind of leaned forward a little bit and she had dollar store glitter and she rubbed it in my hair. <laughs> so I was, okay. Oh, this is Carrie Fisher. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, was, I, I stepped out of the line and I'm walking away and it hit me what I should have said. I should have said, does that make me a Knight of Alderaan? Oh, yeah. And, yeah but you know, she's... A, that was just her. She did weird things like that. Yeah. I love Star Wars. It's one of my favorites. I met William Shatner, but that was an assembly line. Oh, yeah. Because he That's... it was just like, you had like three second interaction with him. Hi, how's it going? Hi, how's it going? Yeah. It would really be cool, though, to sit down and get to know some of these people because... It would. Um... I did have a, an extraordinarily long conversation with, you remember the show Babylon 5, did yeah. you ever watch it? Mm -hmm. Not the original commander, the guy who replaced him. I don't, I, his name escapes me right now, but he was, the original guy who was in charge of it was only on for one season, and this other guy came in and took over for the rest of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, John Sheridan was his character name. I went up to get his autograph, and there was no lineup, so started talking to him and I had a few questions about how the script was written because it was a five-year story that seemed to you know year five reference something happened year one it always seemed to really twist together we started talking about that and we probably chatted for 20 minutes wow and I actually had to walk I I excused myself because the people were starting to line up but it was actually a great interaction it's really nice when people will take the time yeah. and just, and that's why I love doing these things is just getting to know how cool people are. Cause you don't know how cool people are until you take the time and, and interact. Right. Yeah. I, there was the actors who played the Weasley twins in the Harry Potter series. They were in Regina. It would have been prior to like 2015, 2016, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And I was wearing my Rough Rider Jersey. So I go up, to get their autograph and the, the one of them whichever one it was who knows looks up and he goes oh are you excited for the new stadium to be finished oh. so they were either very well briefed yeah or did a lot of research on the area itself which is kind of cool like, yeah right yeah that is a great they recognized it yeah. and they realized that this football stadium is essentially right next door to where the mm -hmm. where the event was being held so who is your favorite comic hero or Oh, or action hero. Action or comic? You can tell me both. Uh, well, obviously James Bond. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he has appeared in comics, so I guess that covers up both. Um, I can't really say I have a favorite comic book hero. Um, there's so many, like, you know, the, tr the, the big names, Superman, Batman. DC or Marvel? Both. Mm -hmm. I love both. I'm a big Wonder Woman fan. Okay. Wonder Woman had a major impact on my life. Okay. Yeah. And the Lasso of Truth, man. I love it. You should research the guy who created Wonder Woman. Yeah. <laughs> he was a polygamist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now Nicholas is like, uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's why she needs the Lasso of Truth. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Deadpool, Wolverine. I mean, you're not like to you no. not, don't have a. No, I don't have a. I enjoy actor. all. Of them. So, what's your favorite? Well, I guess James Bond TV or movie. Um, yeah, TV show. Again, there's so many. Mm -hmm. um, probably one of the, my biggest favorites would be the series Doctor Who. Mm -hmm out of Great Britain. I mean, a sci-fi series that lasts in excess of 50 years. Yeah. Love Doctor Who, and then... I met Doctor number seven. Did you? Yeah. So, yeah, Sylvester McCoy. I, I just really want a phone booth in my basement. Just, <laughs> I just think it's really cool, right? There's supposed to be one in Fleming. Like a Doctor Who? A TARDIS. Somebody's built in the front yard. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to check out Fleming sometime because that is pretty cool. Okay, so now we'll move on to your hobby, your chain mail. Yes. So, when did you get into chain mail? Probably, I'm thinking 12-ish years ago. Yeah. Possibly. Um, the local Lions Club had advertised they are going to do a medieval feast. So, I, I for some reason, I thought, I kind of had this vision of, I can't make my own costume. And I started Googling it and realized that I wasn't going to be able to accomplish this overnight. Mm -hmm. But just something about it, about the hobby, about the whole craft, that kind of caught my attention. I started messing around with it and make, you know, make a few things and mm -hmm. bought some more rings and made a few more things and bought more rings. and. So you just Googled and find out that you need Chain rings and, yeah, and just ordered them and... Yeah, yeah, there's, okay. there's, there, the primary supplier of rings in the world i would think it used to be based in saskatoon okay. they've since moved to, to to outside toronto but so okay it was it was handy that way because shipping costs was cheap and really right quick. and you could even just go there and pick yeah, it and up. i did have gone there a few times okay. to pick stuff up but yeah okay and so what was the first thing you ever made um first thing of any note if you want to call it that I got some scrap of copper wire from work and I made a coif, which is the hat. Okay. I just wound it, I wound it around a big bolt and took a pair of side cutters and cut it apart. And... Inventive. And then you've moved on from there, obviously, yeah. because you've made your rider jersey. Yes. Which you have here. Yes. Um, how much does that weigh? About 15 pounds. Can we grab it and just sure. show? Um, yeah, if you don't, I would just love to show everybody. So 15 pounds. Oh my god. Oh, holy crap. But you think about it. You wear a jacket. Have you went to a jacket? Yeah. Yeah. And you have, and you got George Reed. Yes. He, oh, you put, you chain mailed his arm. I chain mailed it. I chain mailed his signature into it. So George Reed was my favorite football player yeah. growing up. It yeah. was him and Ron Lancaster were the greatest athletes in the world. Um, oh, and actually, okay. well, what inspired me to do this was yeah. uh, there was a s individual from Edmonton who made an Edmonton Eskimos jersey out of tabs from energy drinks. So I felt, well, I could do one better. Yeah. And I started looking into it and, and kind of messing around with some design ideas and whatnot, and then. Um, I, we're heading into, and I, I was, the big dilemma was whose number do I put on it? Mm -hmm. So driving into Regina one day and we went, used to have those billboards on the outside of the stadium. But, yeah. And George Reed was on the one between Regina and White City. So I drove by that and I went, that's it. Because it said how many yards he ran. Is that and it, it, yeah, it was how many yards he ran in his entire career. And it was, that was the distance from where that sign was to, to, the, to, to the old Taylor Field. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have that sign anymore, do they? No, no. They took it all down because because obviously the stadium yeah. won. But I still think it could be up because uh, I think it was a, a great advertising. There was George Reed was on one side, Ron Lancaster was on another. I'm trying to remember the other two because there was one on the four major highways coming into Regina. Yeah. So riders, if you're listening to us, put the signs back up. Yeah. We like them. <laughs> yeah. And then you moved on. You also made a watermelon hat. Yes, because every writer fan needs a watermelon. And you made bow ties. Bow ties, tie ties, um, bracelets, earrings, dragons. Mm -hmm. uh, made a TARDIS. You did? Yeah, I have a TARDIS. And how big is it? It's about that tall. 
Okay, you're gonna have to send us a picture of this so then we can put it on here. Yeah. And then it only travels forward in time. Okay. Makes sense. And then you made a humble Bronco flag. Yeah. I read that your cousin lost a son, Jacob. Yes. And if anybody who doesn't know, you can Google it, but it was a hor hor horrific, I can't even speak, bus crash, bus crash um, that happened on April 18th, 2018. 18, yeah. Um, so you did it for, in memory to help yeah. deal with grief. It, it was a beautiful piece. Thank you. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't just me. Like um, myself, my son Andrew, and a friend of mine from Regina, Anthony, mm -hmm. We were kind of the organizers of it. Mm -hmm. But our idea from behind this from the very beginning is we wanted as many people as possible to be involved in it because it wasn't just from us. Mm -hmm. It was from everybody. So there's, I, I knew a few people in different areas of Canada that I knew that did chain mail. So I would, once we had all the rings gathered up, I would email them a, a portion of the pattern and a bag of rings and say, this oh, is what I want you to make. Okay, I have read something that even some of the star helicopter people. Yes, um, we went to both stars in Saskatoon and Regina, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the people that responded that night oh, at a rings flag. That just hits yeah. home. That is one of the most wonderful things I've ever heard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it. We tried to keep it a secret for as long as possible, but it did get out in the news. So once it was out, we. Mm -hmm. I said, well, we must have started bragging about ourselves on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I was contacted by a lady from Pennsylvania who does chain mail. And uh, her statement to me was, I will help. Not can I help, not I want to help, I will help. And that's what's so great about not just Saskatchewan, but the whole world is that when when something tragic happens is that we come together yeah. right and that's one of the reasons why i love living in kipling is because when one person struggles there's always somebody who will stop and help right like, we um so we eventually when it was finished mm -hmm. um rough estimate in well in excess of 100 people either did one ring or a thousand rings what does it matter and so does that hang in the Humboldt? It, um, it is going to be, they're building a museum okay. to house all these because there's hundreds of donations, uh, people sending things. So when we presented it to the team, we got a hold of the Broncos and we made arrangements to present it um, at, the, at the beginning of a game. And it was the Nippon Hawks, the team they were going to travel to play that night. Mm -hmm. And we did the puck drop. The, the three of us got to do the puck oh, drop. That's kind of nice. The Broncos player that accepted our the that face off was uh, one of the boys that was hurt in the accident. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for doing that. That's really heartfelt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't hurt. It may take a little bit of time out of your day to to help someone, but it's so worth it, right? It was. And it sounds weird, but I probably didn't do anything for a year and a half in chain mail after I finished that flag. I just didn't. I did, lost interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you poured your soul into it, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. How often do you do chain mail now? Do you? I usually putz away at night once in a while, like, um, you know, sit down and watch TV or whatever and, and work away at it. I kind of liken it to when my mother was in the car and you're traveling somewhere and she's crocheting. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll take it with me if we happen to be going, say, into Regina or whatever, and I'll have my bag of crap and I'll sit in the coffee shop while my wife shops. Are you working on any big projects right now? Uh, I am actually been plugging away at it for the last few years. I'm doing another jersey, but I'm doing a breast cancer jersey. Oh. Yeah. So it'll be mostly red with the obvious pink ribbon, mm -hmm. and, and the number on the back is going to be strong enough for anything. That's nice. I'm anxious to see that. How long do you think it will take a few years? Or? Um, it, it's more the, the, how long I can get myself to do it. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's relatively quick once you get started on it, but it's more like get that, get that motivation to sit down. Yeah, and find the time. Yeah, and now that winter is fast approaching, maybe have more time. Mm -hmm. When you're not cooking. Yeah, well that's, I, I do barbecue so I can sit on the barbecue for three or four hours and I can, 
watch a football game. I do notice that you uh, did some cheese. Yes. Yep. Oftentimes I meet Dwayne in the local grocery store and I'm, what's for supper, Dwayne? <laughs> and he usually has an amazing array of food that he's cooking and I'm a little jealous. Yeah, it often doesn't turn out as good as I think it does, and quite often the idea I enter the grocery store with is not what I leave. Yeah, but practice. Oh, we're going to have pork chops tonight and I go out and we're having fried chicken. Oh, wow. Yeah. Variety is the spice of life, Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, one question I like to ask everybody is who inspires you or what inspires you? Um, probably my memories of growing up on a farm. Like I grew up in a three generation household. Mm -hmm. um, my, my mom was an only child. So my dad, when they got married, they moved in to the family farm and he took over farming and just growing up in that environment. Mm -hmm. Like I grew up with my grandfather, my great uncle, my mom, my dad, and my brother. It was the six of us mm -hmm. in a big brick house. I, and um, do you, does the family still own the farm? No, no, no. family doesn't, no. Yeah, yeah. That's the hard part with Saskatchewan and a, a lot of people, you know, there isn't that many people to farm anymore. They're getting bigger and bigger and, yeah. and the little farmers aren't yeah. around anymore. My dad gave me the option of, of taking over the family farm, but he advised me not to. Yeah. Yeah. The house that I grew up in was a two-story brick house that was built sometime between 1910 and 1915. Don't remember the exact date off the top of my head. But you saw those good memories. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And some weird stories too, but. We'll get into another time. <laughs> well, you know, maybe if you have another acting thing, maybe we can get yeah. together again. But sure. I just really want to thank you. Like Welcome. really, I really enjoyed this. And I knew when I asked you that you might be game for this. Um, so check, Dwayne, check Dwayne out on Facebook, yep. um, Instagram, I believe. You yeah, I think bit. I'm there too. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. And maybe tonight, um, we're going to do a little bit of videoing of maybe you helping us make, create sure. something. And, uh, yeah, it was really good. I, I learned lots about you and okay. one from one nerd to another nerd. Thanks. Yep. You're welcome. Thank All you. All right. All right, guys, we'll talk to you again. Thanks for joining us. Remember, life is short. Get out there and explore the world.